Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We are at Lazy M Marina out here on the California Delta. And you know, this time of year on the Delta, I don't want to say it's my least favorite time to fish, but I'll be honest with you, it's my least optimistic time to fish. For largemouth bass, that is, that's what we're targeting today. Out on the California Delta, I mean, January's tough. I think when that water temperature finally hits around 50 degrees out here, man, it just gets really tough to get bit. It makes sense. These fish out here, these largemouth bass, they really slow down, their metabolism slows down just like everywhere else in the winter time and it's tough to catch them and i think i have the track record to prove it i mean seven years i've been out here in california the times that i fished the delta the most skunks by far or really the most difficult trips by far have been in the month of january now i'm not going out here all the time in january that's for sure i've uh, sort of learned my lesson as far as january delta fishing but you know i do like the challenge and i've always said every year that i'm going to give at least a couple of tries in january out on the delta to catch largemouth bass just to improve try to improve as an angle try to figure these fish out learn something maybe get on some fish you never know until you try and i'm gonna keep trying every year until well i don't know when now with all that said i think a lot of what i've been doing wrong in the past is not really following principles for california winter delta fishing i've got some right now that i'll share with you guys that i'm using to hopefully improve my odds of getting bit catching some fish today out on the delta so let's just start location location is huge more so this time of year than any other time in the winter time i mean the delta is huge look how freaking huge the delta is i mean it is massive we're down in tracy i mean the delta technically extends all the way up into sacramento and you got everything in between it's just wild there's so many places to fish it is truly a maze but i think one thing that i've learned maybe by uh, trial and error and is that largemouth bass don't congregate as much in areas with a lot of current i think mainly the central delta middle delta you're looking at frank's track some of these areas that have a lot of current in general especially with bigger tide swings i've just never had any luck in the winter time catching fish on those areas and just going back to the principle about winter fishing and these fish their metabolism slowing down they're not going to want to move as much they're not going to want to eat as much they're not going to want to sit in current all day so i don't think those are really great areas to target so principle number one for me is finding areas that i guess are technically dead end sloughs or areas that have more stagnant water again it's tidal out here so it's always going to have some moving water but areas like we're at today lazy m you can see where we're launching dead end slough there's still going to be some current still going to be some tide but much less than other parts of the delta i don't know there could be some trees to that maybe not but that's where we are today location wise and i think that's probably the most important factor of winter bass fishing out on the delta is your location especially from a kayak Principle number two, I would say, is bait presentation. Going back with metabolism and these fish not being as active, not feeding as much, you gotta slow down. You gotta let these baits sit there. You gotta slow down. You can't be expecting fish to really chase baits down. I think you can still get away with stuff like A-rigs, spinner baits, chatter baits. But again, the idea is slow down. These fish are not going to be eating as much. So I think that's another thing that I've done in the past that I need to really focus on today is slowing down. And the third principle, I don't know, this kind of go either way, but I'd say in in general we need to fish a little bit deeper now that'll depend on the tide the area but more so getting off the tradition that i like to do out here on the delta most times a year of beating bank try to get off the bank maybe fish the grass line the secondary grass line fish a little bit deeper just something else to keep in mind with these fish i very well could go out today and skunk not gonna hide that fact i think it's like a 50 50 chance anytime you come out here in january but i'm gonna give it a shot hopefully learn something and uh either way it's a beautiful day out here in california we're going fishing let's get the kayak set up get out on the water we'll see what happens cleaned up finally yeah i was gonna start right by uh the launch but it was chocolate milk and the uh, water temp was about 47 so i made a little bit of a run it's 49.6 here so that's good and uh water's cleaned up a bit so let's 
start with a jerk bait. <laughs> it is amazing out here. You know, I mean, last year, of course, didn't catch a lot of big fish, but uh, caught a lot of fish. So many fish. A lot of small fish, but that's the thing about the Delta. There are so many fish, bass I'm talking about, largemouth bass in the system. And in the wintertime, you'd think that they don't exist out here sometimes. I don't know. Just like, where do those little ones go? Don't those little ones want to eat? Man, I remember, and <laughs> got a shout out to uh, all you guys in New York and really everyone up in the north, where I'm sure cabin fever is surely set in by now, but I remember those days, man. Being in New York, having to wait four or five months just before I could even think about going fishing. Though it's slow out here in the winter time, at least we can still get out here. Gotta be grateful for that. Seeing some life back here though. We got the birds setting up like they normally do. Some river otters, so there's clearly some bait back here. And you know what that means, where there's bait, there should be some fish. Look at that. Oh no, it came off. Little stinker. Little bass. Well, that's good. All right. Jerk baiting. What am I doing? Should have taken my time on that. I'm trying to horse him in on a jerk bait. Got bit. And I saw it. It was a bass. Like a 12 incher. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. There we go. Oh, never mind has to be more. That's the thing too, if you can find some fish, or find a bite or a fish in an area like this, there's usually more. I highly doubt that was the only fish over there. Come on now. Glimmer of hope. I mean, I'm psyched I just got bit. Not too long at that one area. Fished with a jerk bait, wacky rig, no other bites. So kind of strange, but I'm gonna continue to cover water, hit a few more of these deeper holes. I mean, that was definitely an encouraging sign. Really thought we'd get a few more bites, even if they were dinks over there, but nothing. But gonna keep covering water, slow but fast, if that makes any sense. Then at the end of the day, maybe cycle back through some of the areas that hopefully we have a couple of them that are productive or we got a bite or two. I know I'll definitely revisit that area later in the day. But didn't seem to be, and I was looking at the graph too, didn't seem to be a big concentration of them. So maybe it was just a single fish or two in that spot. Who knows? What's that? Please be fish. I don't think that's grass. A couple of fish nearby though. Well, they're circular, they're probably bluegill or crappie, if I were to guess. I did come prepared just in case too. <laughs> Do I dare? I brought it. Well, why not? Let's drop down there. Got it. Hey, whatever, I don't care. Just to get fit would be nice. Let's see what they're on, too. I can see on my 360. There's like a log or something down there that they're sitting on. That's got to be a fish right there, right there, right on that log. You can see right below us, there's fish right on it. One, two, three, and you can see on the mega, it's actually a big old tree at about seven o'clock. And I'm sitting on one right here.
Well, stay down, buddy. Well, stay down, buddy. Come on, get in the now, buddy. It feels okay. Come on, stay. Oh, it's a new net situation. Oh my god, we caught a bass in January on the Delta. I guess jerkbait is the bait they want. It's not a giant fish, but any other time of year, this feels like a just a really quality fish. Oh man, thank you, sir. Gotta get used to this net situation, but alrighty. No skunk. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Look how sloppy that net job was, too. It's a new net uh, storage method. It is tough to figure out, and I, don't, I still am not 100% with what we have right now. You can see this is the only like solution I could think of. I mean, I'm used to having my net like this, but the graphs are there now, so I couldn't really store it usually on that little roto grip I normally do. And because the front hatch isn't flush, a flat deck, it would kind of fall off. So the only thing I could think is taking this reverse is a cam lock paddle holder clip, putting a little T-bolt on the underside of the captain's bridge, and kind of sits in there just like that. Again, not 100% happy with that, but it's a way to store the net and keep it secure and out of the way. And not having too much handle stick out. I wanted to keep uh, the net kind of contained within the cut. Got another one. <laughs> contained within the kayak. Let me get this in. See, there is a pile of them right there. Same cast. Man, I am so thankful for these fish. These fish, these bites. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Another chunk. Barely hooked, of course. Barely hooked. Come here, buddy. No need to yank on them too hard. I just got one hook in them. Push down. Oh, missed them. Got them. Alrighty. Man, I am... I'm very happy right now. Another chunk. There we go. I can almost long arm this one enough to make it look like it's a good one, but it's not actually that bad. Probably a two, two and a half, fat one. Thank you, sir. Man. Well, I think uh, we gotta keep fishing this area. Jerk baits the deal. Bring the motor up, slow down a little. You know, what's interesting is I saw that cast on the 360. I knew it was deeper only because this 360 is panning around. There's just like grass everywhere, of course. But when you get into the deeper channel, there won't be grass. That's where I made that cast to. They might be sitting on the edge of the grass, but I think that deeper channel is key. We'll see. Milk this area pretty good too, and just the two bites. Thought we'd hit the jackpot for a minute. All right, might be time to move on and cover some more water. I don't know, maybe there are groups of fish in these areas we're getting bit and they're just getting wise, or maybe we're just hitting them at the right time. Hard to say. Ooh, there's the Delta Dinky. <laughs> wow, that was like a six incher. That's the Delta I remember from 2023. It's a bite though. I think it's safe to say jerkbait's been the most, or is the most productive bait for me today. 
of all nine. Yeah, I brought ten rods today. <laughs> you just don't know what they're going to be biting, though. Got to bring it all. day. definitely ahead of the game compared to last year these aren't the biggest fish in the world but last year i would have taken any fish any size those skunks i mean one or two skunks yeah it's a bummer but man you start getting three four trips and you don't catch a fish or get a bite and you start to lose your mind take you. I don't mind you at all. I appreciate you. The tides are moving right now. In theory, this isn't really the area I'd want to be fishing, for bass at least. Let me get a bonus striper. Work my way into this island here and see if we can't pick any buddy up kind of another area though that's a little bit more stagnant as far as water goes and flow and current Let's see if we're relating to it back here good day so far good day if the day ended now i'd be uh i'd be satisfied Never mind. Just the old grass fish. It's not like he was fighting. Ooh. So the one thing, ingredients wise, it doesn't make me feel too optimistic about back here is the temp. It's 48. Other parts we're fishing and getting bites past 50 degrees. It's pretty cold back here. I don't know if I really like that. Definitely losing light, about 4.30, but man, this last stop of the day, something's happening right now. There's a lot of bait in this area. I've seen some bait flick up and then had a bunch of birds, seagulls in particular, that have lined up on the bank, dove down on some of this bait. You'd think there'd be some bass, maybe some striper in here too. Well, folks, we are losing daylight. That sun is about to set, and it's going to get dark quick. So I think now is a good time to head in and get uh, loaded up, and then uh, review the stay in the truck. But man, certainly a day I will take out on the Delta in January. So let's head in, and then we'll uh, recap the day. folks just about 5 30 that is going to do it for our winter january day out on the california delta as mentioned in the beginning of this video the goal of today was to really set ourselves up hopefully for success for catching some largemouth bass on what i feel is the most difficult month time of year to catch bass out on the delta so going over those principles to keep it short and simple location was a big deal presentation and that depth were the main factors that i was going to try to follow as best i could today I got a little bit late of a start got 
got on the water by about 10 30 11 o'clock when i first got out on the water where we launched where i anticipated fishing a little bit water was really dirty hardly any visibility and 47 degrees so i decided to make a little bit of a run not too far but to an area that again had some water that was out of the current kind of these backwater areas that the current isn't as strong where maybe some fish could set up and it really didn't take long to get bit picked up that jerk bait and ended up actually hooking into a fish halfway to the boat i saw it wasn't a big one but she popped off and thought man that's probably a good sign this early on in the day getting a bite and i really fished that area thoroughly i thought maybe that they were stacked up there or there's more fish to be caught slowed down with some worms drop shots just couldn't get bit so i ended up moving on kind of goofed around a little bit even tried to catch a few crappie or bluegill that i saw on the graph but didn't have any luck doing that a little further down into that slough had another area that had some slack water a little bit deeper channel next to a grass line threw that jerk bait in there reeled down twitch twitch and on the pause hooked into a fish got this one in the boat luckily and i used the net again still not really sure how much i like the new net configuration it's not as easy to access or really get when i'm getting a fish in so i might still have to play with that but got that bite i think literally the next cast as i was still talking hooked into another fish and man two fish in the boat three bites all day to me that's pretty magical so i was happy to have it worked that area pretty thoroughly and that was kind of the thing these bites i mean i'd get one or two and then i really couldn't pick up any more fish i'm not sure if these fish just kind of got used to me or they'd see a couple of their buddies get pulled and they wouldn't bite or maybe they just really were lethargic and i was catching the active bunch of the group didn't catch any more there kept moving on hooked into a small one on the jerk bait so fourth bite of the day this one shook off but to me that really meant yeah we're throwing jerk baits all day they want this thing and one thing too that I changed up when rigging tackle last night was instead of throwing like a traditional white or shad color jerkbait, went with a red. Delta, you think of red crawfish, stuff like that. And though the jerkbait is a bait fish imitator, I didn't think it would hurt our chances, especially with some dirtier water in the cold to go with a red jerkbait. And they certainly didn't mind it. Ended up catching another small keeper on it, as well as another dink. I think a lot of the time what would happen is I'd throw that bait in there, I'd reel it down, and I'd reel it right onto their head. And the nice thing about this particular jerkbait is it's a slow sink. So even when you get it down to its depth it'll slowly sink down and i think i was just putting it right on some of these fish's heads and they need it but that was pretty much it i mean we tried a few other areas that looked promising and couldn't get bit called it a day the sun has just set and that was pretty much it a day that we went into with some optimism despite uh, the history we have on the california delta in this month this time of year but used our head thought of the best chances as far as location presentation and then depth to really maximize our opportunity and it happened to work today so i will certainly take it always learning every time out on the delta especially the more difficult trips and tougher times of year you know it's not always just about going and whacking a bunch of fish sometimes it's just going out in conditions that are less favorable and trying to figure out the fish so that's going to wrap up this video as always i thank you for watching for coming along and i will catch you guys in the next one